there is one particular artist, working artist, hardworking artist, who has taught me more about creativity and how to become successful in the arts more than anyone else. He has had the largest impact on my life. And that mystery artist is my husband. And he is taking our eight-year-old child to see Mario Brothers right now. And so because I've watched him go through the ups and downs of an extremely successful artistic career as a television director um, and a television executive now, I wanted to talk a little bit about these prizes. He actually won 10 of these awards for his television work this weekend. And I wanted to talk about the two main themes that have contributed so much to my life and being able to watch this person go through the ups and downs of a television career, of a documentary career. It's taught me so much about the way that I uh, approach my own artistic life, my own books, my own author career, and my own business. And more than anything, it's really been able to give me hope during the tough times. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the success that my husband had last weekend. He won 10 India Catalina prizes. We live in Bogota, Colombia, and the India Catalina prize is a little bit like the Oscars for Colombia. And so he won 10 of them over the weekend. And it just goes to show First and foremost, I'm sure many of the people watching this YouTube channel don't even know what the India Catalina Prize is, but it's a huge deal. And that's another, that's a lesson in and of itself, because as artists and writers, we need to love our particular artistic path so much that we get excited, not just about the Oscars, but we get excited when we hit a certain sales number, or we win a certain magazine prize, or we get an agent that we've been searching for. There are so many specific things within our industry that are huge fulfilling moments that await us at the other side of the rainbow. And not everybody has to know what they are. It's not about egos. It really is about putting your creative work into the world and getting excited about it. And so this is a really personal story for me because uh, Mauricio Tamayo, me and Mal, we've been through the ringer as artists together. We've gone uh, through a lot through this past decade. And I think it's so interesting that the man here who I keep flashing his picture, he's at Super Mario Brothers with my son right now. So I'm making this video behind his back. But I had this framed because he sent me this picture as he was receiving these prizes and they did not come easily. When I was starting my business, there were about seven years where he was either unemployed or underemployed. And it has nothing to do with having talent having ideas, none of that stuff. I mean, looking back, I think as artists, we can go through slumps. We can go through slow periods. Our creativity might not be immediately accepted by the world. He had had wonderful children's shows, television shows. He had an incredible resume. And still, he did go through a long period of time in which he could, he wasn't finding work as a television director with major programs. And so he was underemployed. And that goes a lot to the roller coaster of being an artist. Be prepared to love something enough that you can go through the roller coaster of being an artist. Recently, I read the book Peaks and Valleys, which is a wonderful book. It's written by the same author who, um, as Who Stole My Cheese. But I really preferred this book, Peaks and Valleys, because it talked about the things we learn during the hard times lead to the successes and the things we take for granted during our successes are what can lead to the hard times. Now, that can be a tough pill to swallow. And I mean, it's arguable. Usually life is a little bit more complex than that. But I do think that staying humble, being hardworking, and just keep moving forward, believing the rigor and the work you do inevitably leads, leads to the successes. And sometimes if you become 
overconfident, that hubris that Icarus had can lead us back down. And then the peaks get higher, but then the valleys, depending on what you learn from the strength it takes to climb that mountain. I mean, in order to make these shows, it took seven years of searching for the people to produce this work. And so peaks and valleys, what we learn during the hard times lead to the good times. So now I want to talk about these three guys right here. So this is a picture my husband sent me when he had won these prizes. The excitement is still wafting off of me. Um, this, These particular prizes of the 10 were for something he had held in his heart for decades, not just the seven tough years where he couldn't find somebody to produce it, where I was working my tail off at my business in order to support the family. But this idea, this creative dream that we hold in our hearts, even though it may not happen immediately, one important thing is to understand who it serves and sell it to the people who need it and want it the most. This is also a practice that you can get better at. And the better you get at it, the more success you'll find as an artist. And so let me tell you a little bit about the program that won three of these prizes, but these are definitely, these are definitely the awards that are closest to his heart because for decades he had had this idea for this documentary. It became a docu-series with more than one documentary and it's called Nacion Rebelde. And so that translates to rebel nation. This was on public television here in Colombia. And so it was about how music, rock and roll especially, impacts politics and society and the role that the musicians over from the 50s to today, the role that musicians have taken on in order to shape a nation, to shape society and to shape people's ideas and politics. And so that's what the documentary was about. And he had known this had to happen for years. So what finally led to the success was his ability to understand his audience and sell it to them. So actually, since these prizes have come out, there've been a lot of newspaper articles about how this is a golden era for television in Colombia. There were also prizes given to children's shows that he's helped to produce about environmentalism and other um, documentaries. Nacion Rebelde was the one he, that he really directed that was closest to his heart. But with every single one of these projects, the documentary, the children's shows, the environmental shows, they were all directed to people he knew needed them. Another thing that uh, that has actually been copied in other Latin American countries that I've really been so proud of him for is called Profe en tu Casa. And so that is teacher in your house. When the pandemic started was actually when he got a job for the first time in a long time. And the reason he was able to get in and mold this work was because he had ideas that served people during the pandemic. So many kids had overwhelmed, overwhelmed parents who weren't able to keep up with schooling. And so he put on television a show that that went with, uh, it showed professors all over the world and they were teaching kids things. So with our own creative ideas, we might not immediately understand, okay, I have an idea for a romance novel or a fantasy novel. How does that impact people outside myself? My husband had this idea for this documentary series about how activism and music come together to form a nation. And so these dreams and these ideas come from deep in our hearts. And yet, if we know us, we know other people like us. And so in order to really make that breakthrough, I would say learning from the hard work and the rigor from the peaks and valleys, but then understanding your audience, being able to reach out to them, that's what creates amazing breakthroughs. So I've been really inspired about this. I don't talk a lot about um, personal stories. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of the behind the scenes that has been happening lately in our own life and how, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a wait, but some great things can happen when you keep going for your dream. 
So every single Friday, I put out a new inspiring video to help you move forward with your writing dream. And I also provide a free resource in the link below. So if you're going through a tough time where you can't see your dreams in front of you, where you feel like, oh my God, when is this actually going to happen for me? I want to give you a free resource, which is my free self-publishing class. I am a huge advocate of self-publishing. I've even done a series about how other Renee Brown, Stephen King, so many famous authors, Charles Dickens, have, have gone to self-publishing to lift themselves out of a hard time. So if that feels like the right answer for you and you want to know more about it, I got a free class that will help you perfect the writing process. It will help you find the right cover and just know the ins and outs of how you go about self-publishing. It's a three video course, totally free, right down below. Hope you love it and subscribe to the channel so that every single weekend you move forward with your writing dream and I'm here to help and inspire you. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.